Are you ready? Yeah! I want to know, is everybody ready? Yeah! All right, here we go. Hina. Hina. <laughs> yeah! Bobby back from A Difference is Doing It. And back with a long-awaited, maybe a little bit overdue episode of other basement this <laughs> which has quickly become my single favorite cog in this t diddy machine it was designed to turn the spotlight around to shine it on some of the real talent of t diddy which pretty much all resides out there with you nutbags sprinkled amongst the ranks of the t diddy army today the camera focuses in on a long-standing T. Diddy Army All-Star in Jeffrey Brownlow of Ninja Disc Golf. Mm, which, Jeff, like, he is not only, like, the poster child for being a total disc golf dude. He is also an awesome artist and, frankly, like, a real deal player in our little disc dying community that we are super lucky to have on the channel. This is a reel of some of his artwork here over my super high-tech microphone which you can see pretty easily that like he's dipped his toes into almost every style out there from shaving cream dyes to the trippy cell dyes and clear glue swirls and some super detailed stencil work but it's these crazy blossom designs here at the end that he is going to be walking and talking us through today. Here's what grabbed my attention like right away about Jeff's blossoms. It's how many rings he's cramming <laughs> into the damn things and how like clean and perfectly round and centered they always are. Like I could never get, make that happen with my shaky hands squirting out lotion in, you know, in, into beds. But Jeff, he turns the tables on the traditional blossom design not only kicking it up a notch but like making it so much easier at the same time i've probably talked enough about it at this point and should hand the reins over to jeff so that he can lead us the rest of the way into downtown boomtown yeah <laughs> i'll just circle back on the other side for some quick thank yous and goodbyes so without further ado here is jeff of Ninja Disc Golf teaching his Floetrol Blossom techniques. Jeff, time for some doing it. Mm. All right, uh, Jeff with uh, Ninja Disc Golf. I'm here to kind of teach my die bed Floetrol Blossom style that I do. Let me show you some pictures of some examples of ones that I've done here. It's a UV picture. This one in particular popped much better under the UV than it did under regular light, so I wanted to show that picture. There's one there. I think I did. This is one of our videos. This is also one of the videos. As is that. And that. Here's one I just did. But that's the style that I'm going to show you guys. And, you know, just a little bit about me. Like, uh, I've been dying this, I don't know, maybe going on like two years now. Two year and a half, probably. It all started with just basic stuff. I just, the first thing I did was shaving cream. And I've just built on knowledge and kept trying new things and that's what I just encourage everybody to do. In fact this style kind of came from like I've seen lots of lotion beds. I've done lotion beds with blossoms like this and that's I've actually one of my first YouTube video was a lotion blossom bed the same pattern but done with lotion. And the, these two styles are totally different in how how you actually execute them but you end up with a very similar result. So I encourage everybody, like, you know, play around with Floetrol because I've had a blast with using Floetrol and just taking the silicone out of the equation in this in this instance and just play with different designs you can make. Um, mine's all based on concentric circles, but you could also do like, you know, your lazy wavy type thing. You could just do parallel lines. Um, when you pull the blossom thing, you don't have to do necessarily the blossom style where I'm doing it. You could kind of do circular motions. You could do figure eights. I mean. There, the possibilities are endless like any like anything in art and I'm just really excited to show you guys this because I get asked a lot of questions about it like I said. I think the first one I'm going to show you is a die on a mini 
uh, that's why I'm doing it. You'll notice I'm doing this in the backside of like a putter. It's an R Pro Pig is actually what I'm doing it the die bed in, which just goes to show you. Um, I didn't care much about that disc. It was just a used disc I had laying around and don't die R Pro because it absorbed like zero die. <laughs> just so you know, but uh, this is done on a Lone Star disc MIDI. It shit was like just perfect for the back of a disc basically. So here's that one and. Like I said, the key to this is, you'll see, I'm just making concentric circles. Um, I kind of come back and we'll show you the finished product, everything, and tell you about the next one after that. said that one was done on a mini midi <laughs> so it ended up looking like this this one right here so um, some key notes on that one mainly two things to kind of think about that I thought about with this one um, it was on a midi uh, midi on a mini a small surface so I didn't want to do my normal like three or four color rings because I just thought it would be too busy there's no rules to this you don't even have to repeat the color you could use every color of the rainbow just like one just a little bit of everything and especially if you've got like your little squeeze bottles already made up or whatever just go to town and you can do whatever you want there's no rules two colors was the main thing one of the key main things the other thing you'll notice and this is true with all of these beds when you first start your first like two or three colors that you put down the two or three that you start with as it pushes out to the side, because I don't, again, I'm not starting with Floetrol in the bed, because, and if you did, you could do like a really thin layer. I'm not even sure it would make much difference, so I think the same thing kind of kind of happen. And what happens is, if you go into a lot of Floetrol, it'll sink. I've tried that, by the way, and you don't really want to do that. It'll, it won't allow it to push all the way to the edge, and that's crucial to get the design to work. So it's easy just to do it in a blank pan. But those first few rings are just going to kind of roll over each other. So don't even worry about don't even worry about where the center is or anything until you start getting to the edges. Once you get it, everything all the way to the edge on all sides, all the way around the circle, sorry, um, then you can start kind of shifting it and trying to get it back to the center. You'll notice in a lot of these, they're really off center in the beginning and towards the end, you're like, oh, somehow he got that re-centered. My table's not perfectly level, so they kind of, that's part of it too. So I, I've just gotten used to this with this bed style. I don't have to worry about centering it until I get it like about to the halfway point then I can start kind of shifting the colors as I'm pouring them so this next one we did uh, I think this is just the red white and blue one so for white obviously I'm just doing flow trial with no color in it and again for red I'm using blood red that's a really good one to remember blood red and cherry I think both are pretty good ones but cherry's gonna come out pretty pink on your finished product blood red comes out a pretty true red um, 
the reason why those work so well with this style is because the other ones tend to sink. Um, I've tried Radical Red, I've tried Fire Red, I've tried all the, the especially like Cerise Pink is terrible. It, it sinks really bad and some of the oranges do too. So just kind of keep that in mind. You might have to play with a couple different colors so you find one that the mixture works the way you want it to and it doesn't sink and you don't lose the definition in those lines. So this is the red, white, and blue one and here you go. the red white and blue one and this one actually is kind of cool it's like one of the simpler more straightforward ones that came out beautiful and just not much to it uh, it really shows you how simple the process is this is the final result I actually did the did glue mask the stamp to kind of make the stamp pop out a little bit better as far as heat and time um, this is where a lot of people disagree with me probably on this um, I, I don't know I have a lot of success with it, especially with this bed, but I do the same heat and time for all my Floetrol beds, depending on the plastic type, obviously. If I'm doing like a Champion clear plastic that takes more time, then I basically just double up the time on everything. But what I do is I have a dehydrator right there, and I put it in there for uh, 30 minutes at 105 degrees. Once that 30 minutes is up, I do a 30 minute sit of no, no time at all, just, just, just sitting in there for 30 minutes. Then I do another 30 minutes at 105 degrees. At that point when it's done, I pull it and I wash it off and I'm done. So that, 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 all these dyes are just hour and a half sit time. That's all it is total. 30 minutes heat, 30 minutes nothing, 30 minutes heat, pull it. If you're a heat lamp person and you don't like uh, dehydrators, more power to you. Now you know how to do the style, go out there and kick some butt, you know, <laughs> make something awesome, that's what I say. Okay, so the next one, number three, is a red, white, black one. This is kind of a carbon copy of the other one that you just saw. So the only okay, and notes I can add to this one that you'll see different from the red, white, blue one is I just did more, more ins and outs so that I got a tighter pattern, just more going on. So here's that one.
kind of had forgotten I did that little chef's kiss at the end there with the little, I did the extra little flowery center thing. I uh, had a little bit of white, and I was like, I noticed it kind of got sloppy, and I, I knew that it didn't have the center mass like I did in that in the previous one. Um, I've done other ones where I didn't go back and add, but I kind of just add a little spiral. If you're, if you're not going to mass the center, you should do something to kind of clean up that center area, because it does kind of get muddled once you start bringing a lot. It's just something that you, if you want to clean it up, it, it does kind of add something. Here's what the final one looked like, and the thing is... Again, I didn't mask the stamp on this one, so I don't even I don't even know if the little chef's kiss thing was worth it because it still kind of mostly got covered up by foil right in there. So, you know, just the last one that I'm gonna do um, that that we did a video for is just showing you that okay, now you got the bait. You've done you've seen three of them that are just all the same thing over and over. You know, this problem is is that these these beds aren't really reusable as far as you're not going to get that pattern again. One of the only times I'll do is if it's, as long as they're not colors that have turned to brown, I can just turn this into a cell bed after this. They're still reusable, but only as a cell bed now. I'm not. So this last one is where you get, I got a little creative with it. Um, got to give uh, credit where credit is due and hats off to my friend uh, Lambo with protagonist dies. He, he did this with a with a pour cup method but he did also do like a blossom style and he's he's the one that gave me the, the idea it's the first person i've seen that did this and he he did the uh dipping the poker in three and one before he makes his ins and outs or whatever in the three and the three and one silicone and what you get with that is like kind of a wave of distortion as it goes as it goes out and i've kind of started playing with this style and i like it a lot unfortunately on this finished product and uh I, I, I should have thought about the colors I was using because I've got yellow and purple, which if you're if you're familiar with your color wheel, yellow and purple are, are opposites, and opposites make brown. So I should have known that. I did kind of get some brown in the thing in the finished disc, but it still came out looking pretty cool, and it's definitely a, a, a inspired style that, uh, like I said, when Lambo did it, we both kind of coined it the acid blossom. <laughs> so here you go. This is the. Uh, Last one I'm going to show you guys, and this is, like I said, just, just another blossom, but we mixed it up with adding some 3 and one to the pools. There you go. product on that one so as you can see what I really like about this yeah we got the brown and we I, I wish that we would have used different colors that didn't lead to brown because this could have this distortion thing would have looked a lot cooler then but it kind of works with the fish it does kind of look like you know it's like dirty water or something like that right but you'll notice how all like my ends where we didn't use the silicone oil they kept their definition pretty good and that's what I like about this style if you would have if I would have done it both ways it would have been it would have looked more like just something that I did just like a cell bed or whatever but it's a really fun style to play around with you can get some really cool effects and like I said you can go back and forth and keep your definition one way and do the distortion the other way 
And again, you don't even have to, you can do circular patterns, you can do whatever. You don't have to start by pouring concentric circles to start with. You could pour these downs in kind of like lines, kind of make sheets of lines or whatever. I thought about doing that too and doing more of a lazy wave pattern. This, this, this is just kind of showing everybody that what I'm doing is just just pouring Volt Floatron and letting it, let it do its thing and then I make my design. So possibilities are limitless. You guys need to go out there and play around with this and have some fun with Floatrol. Doesn't have to be all about cells. <laughs> but cells are cool too. I like them too. Keep them coming. Uh, and just want to say thanks to Bobby and thanks for having me on. And hopefully I can uh, keep doing this and keep learning new stuff like everybody else. So uh, till then, y'all keep doing it. I told you he was taking us to downtown Boomtown. I told you he was taking us to downtown Boomtown. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, how awesome was that? My man keeps his poor hand strong. You know, I've used Floetrol so many hundreds of times now, and it has never even dawned on me to try to use it like that for making blossom designs, but that was so much better and so much easier than trying to squirt out lotion rings with my, <laughs> with my shaky hands. His rings they were so much cleaner and so much tighter and he crammed so many of them into the pan every one of them just perfectly circular you know sometimes it just takes seeing it you know for it all to just click into place and i'm guessing that there was a bunch of you nutbags out there left thinking the same thing that i was yo he made that look so easy and i can totally do that let me just say on both accounts you are totally right because jeff just took an already awesome design, improved it, and made it way easier for all of us. You see, this is the true strength of the TDD Army on display in real time, and why I started this video out by saying that this is my single favorite cog in our TDD machine. Like, it's so much more though than our collective of talent and creativity. At its core, it, it, it starts with the willingness of guys like Jeff and the other artists that we've had on this series to share some of the tips, tricks, techniques that they've toiled over figuring out in order to make the, their disc special and unique, which I'll remind you, like that they sell for money, for a living, <laughs> for a living, which, I don't know, that'd be like, that'd be like the colonel dropping a recipe card for his chicken into your to-go bag. <laughs> it doesn't happen for a reason, except around these parts, with these people. That is the true strength of the TDD Army on display. Amongst other things, but really more than any of them, what it inspires in me is gratitude. Like, I am so personally, so incredibly thankful that these artists would be willing to come and share what could justifiably be labeled as trade secrets with us. <laughs> Just so that we could make our beloved plastic circles that much cooler. This is awesome people being awesome. And if that awesomeness inspires gratitude in you, and you want to express it by being awesome right back, well, I got a couple ideas for you. I've got all of Jeff's places up on the screen again there. They're also listed down in the description with links so that you can just one click your way over. Listen, go click those links and like bomb the hell out of his <laughs> out of his social media page. I mean, you're going to like it all anyway, but there is nothing like a good old fashioned TDD Army like bombing. <laughs> So go get him. He also, like you can see up there, has his own YouTube channel with like loads of other disc dyeing tutorials, just like the one he walked us through. Frankly, if you're a subscriber here at The Difference is doing it, there are zero reasons not to be a subscriber over at his channel as well. But like, let's be honest with each other. The best way to support an artist like Jeff, who may have just cut into his sales by sharing all the secrets with you is to go buy some of his art. Hit him up for a custom and get yourself your new favorite disc 
in the bag and at the same time like you'll be supporting some of the awesome people who are trying to help rise the tide for all of the rest of us so go get them go get them looking ahead we have our next episode of other man this is already in the pipeline and ready to pop we've been working with another all-star in the Distine community, the originator of the Lazy Wave design. I'm speaking of, of course, my main man, Austin, from Dies by Red. I'm so stoked about this one. Dude is a total stud. It's still probably a few weeks out from being ready, but by no means too early to hype such a rock star coming onto our airwaves. I will keep you all posted as that one develops in the coming weeks. Okay, and with that, I've hit my talking into the camera hole limit for, t <laughs> for today. So many thanks to Jeff for taking us right back into downtown, boomtown. Dude, that was awesome. Now, now is the time for all of you nutbags to start scrolling towards the links in the description there to commence Operation TDD Army Light Bomb the <laughs> leg bomb the hell out of his social media pages go show that boy some of the love that he deserves have fun whipping up your own flow trail blossoms and until we catch all you kids on the next one you better keep doing it yes. keep doing this stuff oh heartbreaker uh